up everyone and welcome back to the channel if you made it from the pve tier list welcome to arena player versus player classic arena advanced arena we're going to go through it from exclusive zero to one and then to three just as we did on the previous one and i want to thank all of you for your support your comments your likes and uh you know even the one for the constructive criticism as well you know it's really welcomed, especially if you're bringing in good information for us to then look at these tier lists again for the next update. So any comment you make is always welcomed, okay? I will never argue with a viewer. Um, just keep it constructive, as long, as long as you're not rude. You know, as long as you're not rude. I'm not rude to you, so don't be rude to me, please. You know, treat others how you wish to be treated yourself and all that malarkey. Um, okay, so we're going to get into it. Remember, on each exclusive level tier list, there will be a need a rework um, bracket. These all need rework. Um, and then we're going to go from right to left, as we did previously. Any heroes that are in, say, A tier, in any order they're in, doesn't make a difference. They're all in A tier. A plus, again, they're all considered that tier. There's not one that's better than the other kind of thing. They're not listed in that order, okay? So we are going to go through the PvP tier list now. Um, bear with me, okay? It's, it does, it can be a bit draining because I don't have anything in front of me. I'm doing this all from my head as well and from what we'll talk about. And I haven't made this video to a day later, so now I'm going to refresh my memory as well. Um, so we're going to get into it. Sit down, get your popcorn, get a drink. Or if you're driving to work, leave it on. Just chill with me. Just chill with me. Appreciate it. Okay. Here we go. PvP tier list exclusive zero. All of these need to rework. Um, they're all going to get a rework, or hopefully. I know the Mythics are getting a rework. I don't know if the Legends are getting a rework, but they do all need one. You know, the likes of Amalek needs a rework. Uh, Carried needs a rework. Shalda, Taru, Vera, Zach, Zulu, Valentin. Olga definitely needs a rework. And I know someone commented in the last video about Olga. That, uh, I think it's Pan Blue. So I do apologise, Pan Blue, but... Um, you know, he's, she's, sorry, she, uh, she needs, a, she needs an increase on that joint attack to make her more viable. Um, it's just a, a personal point of view. Um, how 9000, I would love to see a rework on him. Eli, um, Eilate, Eilat, Eilate, uh, which is the demon, Doom Legion chick there next to the robot and Carrie. Uh, she needs a rework. Harry obviously needs a rework as well from, from day one. Uh, moving up onto A tier and now you're going to see the rest of the list here. If I can grab it. Here we go. Moving on up. Uh, let's actually. Let's. Just make it a little tiny bit bigger. Am I in the way now? I am in the way now. That's why I made it smaller. Okay. Who am I blocking? That's need to rework. We're fine. Okay. So, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Um, A tier frick. He's more of a PvE hero for me. You know, attack down two and crit damage down. Uh, he doesn't get crit damage down yet, but the attack down two is nice, but it's not going to do enough for us in Arena. Timmy is just a PvE hero. Uh, Little Jack doesn't do enough of his bombs. Nasil is completely useless without his first exclusive. He's completely useless without his first exclusive. We all know that. Natalie, her bleeds, you know, she she is an AoE bleeder. Um, that's all she does bring to the table. It's only one layer and she's not a big nuker. Um, it's not going to be enough, especially not for Arena. You know, we don't need to, we can't take many turns. It needs to be fast. Bang. Thank you, man. Uh, kind of fast. Um, Mai, she also is not doing enough in Arena. She doesn't do a lot in PvE either, to be honest. Gru, well, I'm not even going to talk about Gru. Alarm, without any exclusives. Nope. Elena as well is not good in, in, in PvP. She needs a few turns, really, you know, with the counter-attack and that kind of stuff. She isn't very... She's a bit squishy. She's a bit squishy. So she isn't very good in PvP. Ana as well is no good in PvP, especially at exclusive zero. Moving on up to A+. plus, We have Nordak first and Mythic. And you're probably thinking, wow. Wow. Why is he there? Well, he's only got one turn in him. He's only got one turn in him. If he's... You know, if his buffs last longer, maybe, but no, it's too easy to counter with now. Too easy to counter with. Herfa, she can, she, you know, she's an A plus because she can do a bit of bleed damage and she does self speed up that kind of thing. Maybe earlier on in the arena, if you have her, if you've been using her in PVE, you may get some use out of her. Horus isn't dealing enough damage, 
Bari, without his exclusives, isn't doing enough in Arena. You know, he definitely needs needs some exclusives to get going. Thanatos, we just have better nukers. Uh, I know he has Ghost, which is stealth. Um, you will hardly ever see anyone using Thanatos in PvP. And there's probably a reason for that. Okay, there's probably a reason for that as well. Because, uh, yeah, he's just not... He's not a PvP. Not in my opinion. Not in my opinion. He's not a PvP hero. Tifia, everyone was raving about Tifia when she first came out, thinking PvP, PvP, she's going to be the counter. She's really, really lackluster. She's really, really lackluster. Not doing enough damage. Slavel. At E0, she's going to need another turn before a buff. And her nuke alone isn't quite doing enough. It just isn't doing enough. Um, Melina as well, next to Slavel there, the end of A plus on the bottom row of it. She requires too much gearing. She doesn't have a great kit. You know, she does have some effect resistance when she buffs it, which is nice. But she isn't doing enough. In a, and we're going to say this a lot. She isn't doing enough, or they aren't doing enough. And there's a reason for that, because we need every single hero in our team to be doing something. They all need to be having their set purpose. Okay? Because each it's a, it's a team game, not a one hero game. Um, Tuck, without his exclusive one he's not very good but he is into a plus and not in a purely on the principle that you could use just his uh his shield to cleanse freezes and ignore his skill too you know so he's obviously not freezing the enemies but he's not freeing his, freezing his own allies but he can still cleanse freeze so you could get some use out of him margarito of that exclusive is just no good you've got better heroes you could use lester at e3 who is an epic besmok without exclusives is not very good for pvp he's not He's not good for PvP. Um, he doesn't do enough damage. Same as in PvE. You know, he needs his exclusives. Gramdy is actually okay for PvP. He's pretty useful with his freeze and his speed down kind of thing. Um, so he's there's better options for CC if you can get it. Uh, I think he's immune to freeze as well. Eric, um, I mean, he's... You need a big team set up for Eric. You need a full burn team for Eric. Um, and then you're going to find some use out of him. And he can be useful in PvP, especially, like I said, the likes of Bari, Arna, Feist, who is an epic, um, Ockman. You can use these all these kind of heroes together for a burn team, and they are really impressive, guys. Don't rule out the burn team in PvP. I've seen it in action. It's nasty. It's nasty. Um, Gustav. He's, I mean, he can eat, say, a Lucifer nuke, and he's going to make himself immortal, so he's not jumping onto a next one so he's good for that purpose but other than that he's not really doing a huge amount of damage aisha can be okay for a short burst she also gets a bit of immunity wait does she get that exclusive zero i think that's one of her exclusives but again the same as in pve she's not strong enough to nuke down teams um garina doesn't have a huge use in pvp i mean she can't the same as we say for the pve she can revive a team but is she going to survive long enough is you know and then are they just going to get nuked down again because they haven't got the turn meter there um so on that purpose garena stays at a plus luz is average in arena you really again you need exclusives on luz uh without them he is lackluster hisaro can be useful in pvp um especially with his skill four stacking the bleeds um, it can be pretty nice to pinpoint a hero down. Um, again, I would like to see a few more exclusives on Hisaro for PvP. Claude is A+. Plus at exclusive zero. He's not going to make it any higher than that without them. Um, so Claude, if you have not E zero, the same as these heroes. They all have, they have a use. It's limited. It's limited. Uh, moving on up to S tier. This is where the heroes start getting a bit better for PvP. And yes, Lucaea is in there on the S bracket. Um, she can be useful in PvP because she does have a big attack multiplier and she can land some bleeds as well. So she definitely is useful in PvP. You don't see many people using her in PvP. But bleed, since Bleed had the update, she can, you know, sort of be used in PvP. So don't rule her out. Brynhild moves in here away from her A plus ranking up to S for pvp without any exclusives um solly is in here at s for pvp right right he's got some really good really good you know survival for the team he can be very good um also doesn't he have uh just 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 while we're here 
isn't it a taunt? It has provoke, and he also has a stun. He also has a stun. You know, so this is nice because it's forcing that enemy. It's forcing that enemy. He has ally protection. He has a um, chance to reduce their defense as well. And he also uh, has shield. And allies under ally protection granted by self a shield respectively of 5% of maximum health for two turns. Wait. Yeah, he grants allies under ally protection a shield. So, you know, he's got some use in PvP. Don't rule out Sully. Don't rule him out. I think he's going to, you know, he's very good there. Sinton again. Sinton the dwarf next to Sully. He is also useful in PvP. Forcing the enemies with provoke. Forcing them all to use their basic against him. So I would like to see a few more people possibly using Sinton in PvP. Who knows? Who knows? Could Provoke be making a comeback? It never came. So it hasn't got to make a comeback. It's never come. So it's not really making... Yeah, okay. Um, Maeve is good in PvP because she can nuke pretty hard with her ultimate on that initial hit. It, um, it can nuke down enemies quite good. So my, it definitely does deserve to be an S tier. She's got some nice damage there. And the fact as well, you can use her very well in PvE too. Gunner is great because he can remove shields and he's also doing quite a bit of damage with his burn, believe it or not. I've seen Gunner in action in PvP and he is very, very useful. Even the likes of Bailey uses Gunner in PvP. Right? Right? Enough said. Uh, Sana has a good nuke um, in PvP. She's uh, got that crit rate buff as well, so she's a bit easier to gear. Um, so she is very good for PvP um, without any exclusives. Remember, this is about exclusives, okay? Things move. Things move. Um, Albeck is in there at S tier. That's because of his survivability. His survivability. He is more of a PvP hero than a PvE hero. Um, Elsa is also in at S for PvP. She's a support and she's a pretty good support. She's a pretty good support. Deserving her rank of S here. Yoko as well in at S. She's a very good direct damage dealer. And she can hit pretty darn hard um so don't sleep on yoko she is more of a pvp hero than pve okay so try her out use her she could be really really successful walter as well as aoe poison um is good for poison teams you know you need a team around him so walter deserves to be in s for pvp zia is in here as well in s tier she needs too much setup about any exclusives for pvp um so she needs too much setup. She's got a squat, you know. She's got a squat. Um, and then she gets to nuke. So on that basis, she sits at S because it just takes too long to get her going. Uh, Megan. Megan as well. She can hit hard. You know, she's got a good ultimate. But it's, it is a little bit... It doesn't have that oomph. You know, that oomph. So Megan sits in at S. I really like Megan as well. I don't use her enough in PvP myself. Uh, what I should do, especially, it's, it's weird because when I do these lists, I start thinking to myself, okay, so why haven't I been doing that? So what I'm doing, I'm also learning as well. Um, so Megan sits in there, she also does get an AoE uh, debuff down kind of thing, but she as well needs her exclusives to really exceed in PvP. Guhana is a very good option for PvP, that's because she gets the increase of turn meter, she's also speed down on an enemy and speeding up our allies, also increasing our turn meter on, our, on her skill 4. She is a very good hero for PvP, do not rule out Guhana. Um, uh, Alahan, Alahan as well, he is another very good hero for PvP, another one we don't really see anyone using, but if exclusive zeros are your thing at the moment, then Alahan can be good for that, balancing out the health of our allies, also with the, the shield strip as well. Definitely. Wait, hang on a minute. Isn't it? Yes, removes all the enemy shields. You know, so that as well. And, and a 40% chance to inflict stun. It's very useful. Uh, so don't sleep on Alahan as well. Mu2 does sit in S. Yes, he did start in S plus for PvE. But in PvP, he takes too long to get into his werewolf form, which is where he's doing his stuff. All right? That's when he becomes a werewolf. Um, so until that you know, gets a couple of exclusives, he's going to be sitting in S for PvP. Turf as well. He's a very good hero. I love Turf in PvE and PvP. Uh, if you come across him, you just know that he's going to be an issue. And you're always thinking in your mind, do I just take him out before he self-counters and shields? Um, and earlier on in the game as well, exclusive zero people, you're going to be like, this guy is annoying. This guy is annoying. Unless you've got a hero with resistance debuff, you know, you're going to have a few issues with Turf. You're going to have a few issues with Turf. 
Again, you don't see many people using him, um, but he is pretty good for PvP. Also, he's, if he's got a leech as well, you know, you're putting a lot of poisons on, he's got a shield on, and then he's healing himself while he's under that shield. So it can be pretty deadly. Taff definitely deserves it to be in S tier here because he is a very good PvP hero with his AoE poisons and intertwined, causing the enemy to be stunned on their second action. Slack though as well, yes. Okay, he is in here at S. And, you know, it, rightly so, because he removes all of their attribute buffs. It's not that, uh, it's not all of the target's buffs, it's just their attribute buffs. It, it's very good, but also we were just talking about resistance buff, and he does have that. He does have that. Um, so this is very useful as well. Do not rule it out. Do not rule it out. Without exclusives, Slack though is still useful in PvP. Serena, again, she, sit, she sits on a solid S throughout both lists. Right, she does. Um, she can be very good in PvP, uh, especially early on. She can do very good AoE damage. She can cause enemies problem, especially with that stealth. Sigmund, um, health burner, uh, shield as well for the team. But he's sitting in S. He's sitting in S. He's not quite as substantial in PvP as he is PvE. It's just that simple. Ockman as well is in at S. Again, another health burner here and burn hero. Um, if you was pairing them up with the likes of a team with Bari and Eric, when you put that team together, possibly, you know, it, it becomes different. But as he is, definitely deserves his S ranking here. Jennifer in at S. The bug lady. Jennifer next to Ockman up there. Right, right. S3 to zero. She's very solid. She's very solid. Um, she will cause you problems in PvP. She can hit very, very hard. Um, you know, so don't sleep on Jennifer for PvP if you've been using her. Naskama for PvP in here, straight away at S, stealing, uh, removing buffs. Um, it's just, it's, you know, it's very, very nice. People do like Naskama, and he is good for PvP, but he is sitting in S tier. Melia gets to go in there at S as well, which some of you may be shocked about, but, you know, she once she goes into Valkyrie form, she can pinpoint a good amount of health burns on the enemy, taking them down. She's also got that counter-attack feature. Um, so Melia definitely deserves to sit in here at S. Ariel, who is rated low in PvE, she is definitely a PvP hero, and she can do some nice damage. Um... She can do some nice damage, especially single target, you know, so, and she self stouts. So don't sleep on Ariel. You may want to use her, especially if she's a, your only option, you know. So if it's for PvP, you can try her out and use her. Dario sits in here at S. Again, without any exclusives, Dario is a little bit lackluster in comparison to when he's got exclusives. Um, he will get much better. But he can still do pretty good in PvP. Asindo, without exclusives, in at S. Can you believe it? Can you believe Asindo has been put in here at S tier without exclusives? <laughs> it's pretty simple. It's not until she gets her first exclusives that she becomes a god. It's not until then, because she can be outspeeded. Um, when she gets her turn meter increase of 30% at exclusive 1, that's when she goes instantly up. Instantly up to god, you know. So, if you've not watched the video and my explanation on why Asindo is in at S, and you've commented with something... I hope you come back, or I'll be bringing you back to this point, okay, to listen. So, that's why she's in an S. Okay, moving on up to S+. plus. Allcaster comes in here uh, with his CC now, becoming much more useful. You know, CC is big in PvP, we all know this. The chance to freeze and horrify, meaning he's actually very good for PvP now. Also, the fact if he dies, he's going to buff up a hero for you as well, so that can be nice, and if you kill that hero, then he's going to revive. So that's very useful. Mammoth coming in at S plus with no exclusives. This is where Mammoth shines for me, is PvP over PvE. Um, you know, stealing the buffs, speed up for your team. It is very nice. And, you know, that's super useful. You think we've, you know, he definitely deserves to be in at S plus Mammoth. Definitely deserves to, especially next to Fiona there as well. If you think of Fiona with her st AoE stun and revive, but she doesn't do things like speed up too. And speed up is huge in PvP. The fast speed is king in arena. Speed is king in arena. So Mammoth definitely deserving that S plus ranking there. Um, Fiona, again, the AoE stun, the revive, uh, the resistibility as well. She's very, very solid. Um, and Gilliman in at S plus as well. Again, not only we were just talking about speed, speed, uh, speed up too. 
but she's stripping buffs and then she's putting speed down to on the enemy so that can be very nice um that, that's a lot in itself just that skill is solid and that's why she deserves to be in s plus uh moving on to zyra zyra as well she's 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 just awesome at cc she's just awesome at cc even without the exclusives so definitely don't sleep on zyra you can watch a showcase on zyra as well i know that she's like e5 in my video but you get a kind of gist of where she is and she is very good in pvp she's also very very fast very fast nidrob comes in here s plus Yes, S+. Plus. That's because of his AoE, uh, AoE ability. His second skill can do a good amount of damage. His final skill can put quite a few bleeds on the enemy. So Nidrold deserves to be an S+, plus here. Um, I, in one of my videos, you would have seen me showcasing Nidrold in PvP. Uh, Greta finally gets some highlight. Gets, gets a showcase on where she is. S+, plus for PvP. Because she is solid in PvP. This is where she comes in. This is what she's built for, PvP, not PvE. Greta is a PvP hero, and there she really does excel. She is wonderful. You know, the, the, the self-effect resistance, the team buff of resistance. She can freeze on a basic. She can remove a buff, then deal damage. She's very good. Do not sleep on her. Hisonia, of course, Hisonia. He can be awesome in PvP, even at exclusive zero, paired with the likes of Ben Austin, throwing those uh, health burns out. Um, also, the single target bully can be very good for uh, damage, and the, uh, the the AOE, the full team AOE of his Dragon Flame, <laughs> rightly deserving his S plus ranking. Hoff, Hoff sits in S plus even at exclusive zero because the hunter's mark that he places on the enemies is just so valuable, especially if you have a nuker and he takes out that enemy. Getting another turn on your nuker is ginormous. AoE health burn as well with feebleness one. So he is a very solid S plus choice. Elena comes in here with uh, at S plus straight away, which I think a few people may be a little bit shocked about. But let me just have a little discussion on Elena, shall we? Um, you know, she can remove all of their buffs. And again, as we've spoken about, Gilliman and Mama can removing those buffs is huge, but she doesn't get her speed down just yet. So you know, but it's the fact that she can cleanse all attribute buffs of all allies and restores health um, of by 12% of maximum health to all allies too. A basic can reflect back debuffs on her to any target that we want. So if she's silenced, um, she's going to throw that back onto an enemy that you choose. Onto an enemy that you choose. If she has a few stacks of poisons on her, you can select a hero you want those to land on so they possibly could die in the next turn. So she deserves to be an S+. Plus. Moving on up to God. Ben Austin, of course, is in there. Lucifer, of course, is in there. Luna, as well, is in there. Focas is amazing without exclusives. PvP, he can be huge. PvP, he can be huge. Space is in at God instantly. Just because her turn meter is insane. Especially straight away. Uh, it's up to like a 20, is it a 28% turn meter increase? Either 26 to 28 um increasing the allies turn meter you, you guys know what space does right you've seen you you should have seen the videos i've been putting out lately on pvp with space involved she's a fantastic pvp hero she's a fantastic pve hero uh, santa well we all know santa is going to be in here at god at exclusive zero he um <laughs> he just provides far too much for our team with a damage buff the defense buff and also the effect resistance on our support he doesn't provide an apple yet, but he can freeze you permanently if you've already been frozen. Quinlan is awesome in PvP. Just fantastic. He's just so annoying. Is Quinlan. I hate him. I hate him. I do. I hate him. I don't want to put him there, but I've got to because that's his ranking. I don't want to put him up there. But that's where he deserves to be. Catherine, fantastic for PvP. She's a god everywhere. Elec is definitely a god in PvP. The fact that you can protect a designated ally who's got the highest attack from any debuffs of any kind, CC, the damage of attack, he can really make your team work in PvP. He is a huge hero. You'll see a lot of good players using Elec. He's fantastic. So if you've been sleeping on Elec because of previous tier lists from people, please do not sleep on Elec. He's a monster. He is an absolute monster. Agatha, well, we all know that Agatha is going to be in here. She is friggin' nuts in PvP. We absolutely love her. Okay, that is it for Exclusive Zero, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Moving on over now 
two, exclusive one, and here it comes. So did that change? Did that change? Hmm. Bear with me. Bear with me. Did that friggin' change? It did change. It did change. Yes, it did change. Ignore me. Ign I'm an idiot. I'm an absolute idiot. Okay. Needs rework. None of these will move. They all need a rework. Doesn't matter where they currently sit. They need a rework. Uh, they're not good enough. They're not good enough. They may even need a slight re rework or not. A. Frick still stays in at A. At exclusive one. Timmy still stays. Little Jack still stays. Natalie still stays. Mai still stays. Gru still stays. Lamb is still staying. Alina, I'm sorry you Alina lovers. She's still staying in A. She's just not good enough for PvP. Um, Anna is still staying at A for PvP. Nordak is still in at A+, plus, and that's because his exclusives don't do a huge amount for him. And his buffs don't last long enough. Hertha is still staying at A+, plus. Horus too. Bari as well. It was debatable if Bari should be moved up to S, now that he's getting the increase on his crit damage from Mastery. Potentially, you could do well with him in PvP, but it's a tricky one, okay? It's a tricky one because he is... You need very, very good gear for him to build, and if you've got an exclusive one, you, you just need more on him. You will really see the difference once you have a few more on him. Thanatos is staying at A+. I'm sorry if you want him higher. This is where he sits for me and for who we've confirmed it with. Tifia, too lackluster, not doing enough. Melina is now granting a little mini shield. She stays in A+, or did she move from A+. No, she stays in A+, I think. She stays. Um, Bezmok still stays in A+. Gramdy is still here. Eric is still here. Gustav is still here. Aisha, Garina, Luz, and Claude is still here too. Okay. What is wrong with me tonight? Moving on up to S tier. S tier. We have the likes of Lucaya down there at the bottom. Um, Brynhild as well is now into S. Was she into S previously? I believe she was. Because she is a PvP hero. Yes, she was. She was there previously. We have Slivel now in S as well. Um, she can now self buff her attack and then do a new after. She can be useful, but she can remove the buffs that we provided on her from another ally because of those extra turns. Hisaro sits in S. Doing a lot more now at exclusive one as well. A bit more damage. Um, he can he can trigger the uh, the bleeds on an enemy. Solly is still sitting in S. He's actually granting consolidation two now, I believe it is. Sinton is sitting in S. Maeve still sits in S. Gunner still sits in S. Sana is in S. Um, Elbeck is still sitting in S. His survival is increasing. He is getting better. Elsa is still sitting there. Yoko stays. Walter stays. Zia as well. Um, it is an increase to her at E1, but still not quite enough. Still not enough to make her that booming hero. Uh, Megan is still staying there. She still needs more to move up. Guhana still stays there, even though she's very good in PvP. Um, Alahan still belongs here. Uh, Mutu is still in S. Yes, okay. He can now transform into a werewolf a little bit faster um, and still doing very good damage. But compared to the ones above, it's very tricky. It's very tricky. It's very, very tricky to move him on that basis because is he going to survive long enough? Um, Turf is still sitting in at S. Uh, Taff sits in S. Serena still sitting at F. Sigmund, Ockman, uh, what's she called again? Jennifer, the bug lady, she's still in at S. Naskama stays at S. Melia, Ariel, and Dario doesn't move up quite yeah, not quite yet. Okay, we're moving on up to S+. And I know we're going through this fast, but we, we've talked about these heroes now. And their stay exclusive has been a big change. We don't need to discuss them. Um, S+, Allcaster, is staying in S+. Still doing pretty similar, but he now does gain death immunity. Slackdo moving on up. Why? Because Slackdo now gains... Um, he, wait, 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 I need to get this correct. He now gains, removes all the target's buffs before attacking. 
So that is very nice because he's removing all buffs, not just attribute buffs. Then he's, you know, it's, it's, it's made him much more useful. Tuck now moves up because he gets to freeze the enemies, freeze his own allies, and then put a shield on that's going to cleanse our allies of freeze, making him super useful because of the CC and also a nice support shield for our allies. Margarita moves on up to S+. Some of you are going to be saying, why not God? Why is Margarita not God? And... Okay, you can you can shout at me for this, all right? You can shout at me. I give you I give you permission. I give you permission. But she requires such strong gear. You may wipe out enemies to begin with. But she and once that AOE's gone, she's not doing anything. But you know, you need the likes of Besiden or Focas in there to to buff her up. She can be very good, and S plus is a very good tier to be on. But is she god worthy? Is she god worthy? I use her myself. Well, I don't use her anymore because there's just better options. There's just better options for me to use now. I don't even use her in advanced arena anymore because I had there's so many more options now for better teams to be built. Mamuk stays in S plus alongside Igilimum. Uh, Zyra staying in S plus with Nidrold as well. Wow, I should have put Nidrold and and uh, Igilimum next to each other because. There's a little bit of a banter going on over and being brother and sister. Um, so he's doing a little bit more now on his sword mastery, his second skill. Greta stays in at S plus. Hoff stays. Elena now debuffing and causing speed down two. Massive. Massive. Okay. Moving on up to the god tier. And unfortunately, you can see a Cinder and Focus up there, but they are covered by the tier maker. Okay. Ben Austin uh, deserves to be in at god just because... He is a god in PvP. Uh, Lucifer stays god. Luna stays in at god. Nasil now makes it into god tier. Thankfully, you know, with that exclusive one, he's just first to go every time. He can freeze the enemy, build him with his maximum X, affect it. Completely massive for PvP. Humongous for PvP. Even ally protection on him is huge. Even ally protection on him is huge. Fiona moves up into god. And what was it that moved her up into god? What was it that moved her up into god? That's it. When in, uh, inviolability, in, inviolability is triggered, self turn meter is increased by 25%. Meaning that as soon as she gets hit by a contr uh, control effect, she is, is pushing herself 25% of the turn meter, meaning that she can then stun all of the enemies. It's really nice to have that on her exclusive one. Hizonia moves up to god mode on exclusive one. And can you believe it? I need to check it. Hizonia's exclusive one, even though I've read it a million times. Dragon Flame can trigger health burn, making it massive damage. Massive damage on Hizonia now. Um, Asindo, god mode. She gets that 30% turn meter increase. Focas stays in at god. He's just so good for PvP. You know, if he's triggering either Hazonia again or Margarita or any of your attackers, Lucifer, it's massive. Space stays at God. Santa, Quinlan, Catherine, Elec and Agatha all stay at God at E1. Just these heroes are fantastic. Okay, moving. Should I make this smaller a second just so people can snip it? Because I do need to add these in. I know someone mentioned earlier about adding um a picture in of them there you go if you want to snip that quickly at 33 minutes 16 if you've got lost in time there feel free to snip that that is your exclusive one pvp tier list okay moving on up to the big one exclusive level four exclusive level four for pvp here we go here it is here it is guys this is the one the exclusive free for all your heroes Needs rework. They've stayed the same. Exactly the same. A. We still have Frick, Timmy, Natalie and Gru. Who moved from there this time? We're going to come across them in a moment. Uh, Nordak stays at A+. Still, nothing's really changed much in Nordak. His buffs are too short for PvP. Mai stays at A+. Elena, I'm sorry guys. She did move up one to A+. here. Melina stays in there. Tifia is too lackluster on her damage. E um, Eric is staying in at A+. Gustav, Aisha... Arena is at A plus two. And S tier, we now have Little Jack wiggling his little butt into an S because of those candy bombs explosion. You're pairing them up with Focas could be very, very nice, even Poseidon. Um, Lamb moves his way into S. He gets some damage immunity. You know, he's going to have a ton of health, but he needs to survive. You need a stool team for Lamb to work. He can be very good in Arena. You might have seen some people using him. 
I'm not going to mention any names. I'm not going to mention any names. Arna now has a big use in PvP at exclusive free. Uh, you can all see BJ Skiller taking advantage of that. 20% increase to damage over time for all allies. Very, very nice indeed. Very nice indeed. Hertha is still in S. She, you know, she's dealing some very good bleed damage. She deserves to stay in at S um, with her exclusives. Horus is still in S. Not, you know, if... And when I was making this, when I was making this, I thought, wow, could Horus be the answer to the Santa counter? Because once the apples remove, the enemies still have 30% health. But can you believe it? They need to be under 30% health for Horus to launch his attack after it's been dealt to deal damage. So it's not going to make that change. Um, so he does deserve to still be an S. Thanatos is in that S. Grandy moves up into S. He can be very, very good in PvP. We said this earlier, especially Advanced Arena. Luz is in S. He's still dealing some pretty good damage now, but not quite enough. He's more of a PvE hero. Solly is in S. Sinton, Maeve, Gunner, Sana. And Gunner is going to stay in S. I know people could be like, well, is he S plus or is he not? It was tough. It was tough. And I know I'm probably going to upset a couple of people on that. Especially Bailey. Especially Bailey. Because he loved Gunner. Um, and so do a few others. Let me know if I was wrong on that one. Sana is sitting in here. Elsa as well. Elsa was a tricky one. Should she deserve to be S+. Plus? You don't see a huge amount of people using her. Her skill is very hard to understand. Her exclusives are very hard to understand. Um, she does provide a lot of survivability for your team. There are a lot of survival. A lot of survival on your team there. Um, it's very close. I wish I could have like something in between S and S+. Plus. Something in between S and S+. Plus, but I don't. I don't. Um, Yoko is now hitting very hard as well. She is very good for PvP, but she doesn't deserve to be in an upper S plus here. Walter is now increasing poison damage, I believe, by 15%. I think it's 15%. Yes, he can deal 30% more poison damage. Allies can deal 15% more. That's very nice. Um... Guhana stays in here at S. She does get speed up too now, and that can be nice for your allies. She's also got a turn meter and all the other stuff we spoke about earlier on in the video. Alahan stays in S. Turf is staying in S as well. Uh, Serena, Sigmund, Ockman, Jennifer, Nascama, Ariel, and Dario all are in S. They don't deserve to be in that S plus tier. They don't, but we're moving on to that now. We're moving on to that now. Lucaea in there at S plus for PvP. Some of you may be shocked at that one. Maybe shocked at that one. But she can be pretty good in PvP. Uh, she's got a good gear. You know, the same as say Hisaro. You know, she's she's doing a lot of nuke damage. She's putting bleeds on the enemy. She can be very good for PvP. So if you have her, try her in PvP. Try her in PvP. Brynhild is now in at S plus not given that god status even though she is a pvp hero i know i know i know she does increase brynhild's term meter by 20 percent when she casts wolfblade sash or increases the term meter by 40 percent if a target's health is below 50 percent and she gets one extra turn if this attack's inflicted kill she increases brynhild's defense by 60 percent for two turns when she casts heavy swords and she resets the cooldowns of all the allies active skills when casting protein um It was a tricky one. Did she deserve to be in God or does she deserve S plus? I want you guys to comment on that. I want you guys to comment on that. Because if you compare her to who we have up there in God, does she deserve to sit next to them? Does she deserve to sit next to them? Because we don't think so. We do not think so. All caster is staying in S plus. Yes, he's dealing some nasty damage. Yes, he's doing some CC. Still does not deserve that God tier for us. Besmok moves his way up into S+, plus, dealing a very good damage now, but it's still not enough to move him into that god tier. He can be great for our team to push direct damage though. Claude moves in here up into S+, plus, 
just underneath Margarita there, as you can see. That's if you're lost on the list, that's where we are. Um, he is now a big AoE nuker, and he can definitely match Margarita on his nuke. So don't sleep on him if you have an E3, Claude. Slavau is now in S+, plus as well. She's dealing a lot more damage. She makes the enemies not able to revive when she nukes them down she can ignore immunity as well she is very very good hisaro is in s plus he's doing a lot of bleed damage he can do very very good <laughs> he can clear through teams if you have a strong enough team surrounding him hisaro can do that on his own so definitely don't sleep on him albeck is moving up into s plus as well that's because of his survivability for the team as well it is just very large now definitely deserves to be in at s plus um, Albeck is very good for PvP. Zia now is nuking bomb. She doesn't make it into God though, how we used to have her ranked. Um, she still requires that extra turn to get going and sometimes that may not just be enough. That may not just be enough. And you can no longer trigger that extra turn on her ultimate if the enemy has Santa because she doesn't kill them anymore because they've got the apple. Kind of made Zia a little bit mm -mm, in PvP. Um, Megan is now a nuker in PvP and she again also can ignore um, immortality so she's very good for that massive nuke massive nuke Mutu is in S plus dealing very very good damage and he's in werewolf form pretty much all the time as well Taff is now granting 50% extra damage on his poisons it's a lot of damage it's a lot of damage at E3 very nice. Melia is in S+. Plus. Um, she's obviously putting AoE burns on the enemy. She's She's got very good of a Valkyrie. Um, what was it? She's dealing 25% more damage in Valkyrie is what I meant to say. Slack though is in S+. Plus. He's now got a massive hit on his final hit when the enemy has resistance buff which he puts on them with his hammer swing as well. And that can really hit very hard. He's also debuffing enemies too. Tuck stays at S+. Plus. Margarita, again, staying at S+, plus, even at E3. We do not feel she's strong enough now to be in at God. I know she's very good, and I, I know people are going to say, Karzak, what the fuck? But I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we cannot put her in God. I'm sorry, I apologise. Okay, I do. And I mean it. I just don't feel like she deserves to be there anymore. I don't. Nidrold is awesome now, PvP. Tons of, of bleeds everywhere. Doing a lot of damage with his second skill as well. Definitely a very good PvP hero. Uh, Greta, again, doesn't move into God. But she is doing a lot in PvP. But she can still be killed. You know, she is removing buffs and, and nuking and putting defense down too on the enemies. And it was tricky as well. Guys, these are so hard to make. They really are so hard to make because you need to understand that when they're made, you know people are going to look at them and judge them too. Everyone will be judging these as harshly as they can to try and say you're wrong. And that's why we spend the time we do spend on them when we put them out. Because we're confident that these are correct. And I need you to let me know if you believe they are. Okay, moving on to Hoff. Hoff stays in S+, plus like before. Mamuk and Gileman are both in S+. Plus. Both very, very solid PvP heroes. But do they deserve God? We don't think so. More to find out on them, I guess. You've seen me testing Gileman. You haven't seen me testing Mamuk. Um, so, you know, he's sitting next to her. This isn't a biased video. Okay, this isn't biased. Um, Elena is still in S+, plus as well. Fantastic for PvP. Moving on to the final tier of the video, guys. Thank you all. God tier. Ben Austin now is using his skill 4 pretty much all the time. Or at least I do. He's fantastic. He's fantastic in PvP. Lucifer nuking like Lucifer should. Um, Luna is still god mode PvP. You need a lot of effect resistance. So make sure you put effect resistance on your Luna, guys. Make sure you're doing it. Um, Bari is now a god for PvP. He is doing so much damage. So much damage. E3 Bari is scary. It's scary. 
Zyra is now God. She is freaking God for CC, okay? Definitely deserves that status up there. Definitely. Nasil stays in at God. Fiona is in God. Hizonia is in God. Um, Asindo stays in God as well. Focas stays. Space stays. Santa is obviously in God. It's obviously in God. Um, Quinlan as well. Catherine, Alec, and Agatha. It's done. There's no more lists. No more lists. It will be updated. It will be updated. And that's why we need your help. If you feel like this list was correct. If you know something that we don't. Or you've had more experience. You're a seasoned player. That wants to help others in the community with the correct information. Because that's what all of this is about. It's, that's what all of this is about. It's about getting the right information out for people. So that they can build the strongest teams that they possibly can. That's, that's, that's all it's about. Getting that information and help out there for everyone. So, I'm, you know, it was a lot of work, but I'm glad it's done. I'm glad this is out now. And I really hope that you all agree with where they're placed, other than maybe one or two heroes. Other than maybe one or two heroes. That's always going to happen, and I expect that to happen. I want that to happen. I want people to prove me wrong and say, this hero should be here, because I'm clearly missing something, and you're going to make me a better player too. So on that note, I want to thank everyone again for watching. I want to thank all of you for the support. I want to thank all of you for your comments. I want to thank all of you for your DMs that you send my way as well. They're all very heartwarming and you're all an absolute fantastic community. I can't thank all of you enough for the support you've shown me, the views you've given me, um, the help that you've done with this channel to make it better and better. So on that note, I'm going to go. I will see you on the next video. Enjoy this PvP tier list. It's needed. No one else is covering a PvP tier list because it's very tough. It's very tricky. And you need to have a big understanding of each hero. Um, so we've tried our best. And I hope it's accurate. Take care, everyone. Have a great day or evening, wherever you are. <laughs>